this lesson, we'll be looking at time modification. Besides pausing game execution, a task that is a staple of most games and simulations, we'll also look at how to make the gameplay run faster or slower. We'll begin with some new globals. Firstly, game time, which will keep track of the elapsed gameplay time. Next, we'll create a list of allowed game speeds. Each will have a name and a multiplier, which is the rate at which game time progresses for this speed compared to normal. For example, 2 would be twice normal speed, 0.5 would be half normal speed, and 0 would be no progression or pause. Finally, current speed is the index in the game speeds list at which our game is currently running. In our Windows on load event handler, we're going to add another key to listen to in the key up event handler. We'll look for the S key, key code 83. If the S key is pressed, we'll jump the current speed index to the next game speeds entry or, if we're at the last entry, back to the start, index 0. Now, in our game's main loop, draw game, we're going to increase our game time. We'll add the time since the last frame, time elapsed, multiplied by the current game speed's molt property to the game time global. This is our in-game elapsed time. We'll also update our player character movement in the game loop. The player's process movement method will now be given the game time as its argument and we'll also check that the game speed multiplier is not currently paused before checking for user input. Also, with the user input, we'll change the argument for each of the move methods to the game time variable. Finally, inside our nested drawing loops, where we're drawing tile sprites that may be animated, we'll change the time reference argument for the getFrame function call to GameTime. We'll also show, for informational purposes, the current game speed we're running at beneath the frame rate. Essentially, what we're doing is as follows. As before, we're taking the current time and subtracting the time the game update method was last called to get the elapsed time, which lets us determine how much things move and change. For example, if 25 milliseconds has passed since our last update, and our character moves one tile in 100 milliseconds, we know that they have progressed one quarter of the distance. But, with our time modification code, we're taking that elapsed time and modifying it before doing these calculations. For example, if we were running at twice the speed, we'll double the elapsed time. If we're running at 0.25 of normal speed, we'll divide the elapsed time by 4. If we're paused, we're multiplying the elapsed time by 0. In other words, we're just considering the elapsed time to be 0. With these changes, we can not only pause, but also speed up and slow down gameplay as we wish. <laughs>